Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and welcome back to another DVD video. Today, I'm going to be talking all things flashlight. We're going to be talking about regular saves, locker saves, CJs, other uses for flashlights. We're going to be going really in depth today. Also, before we get in the video, I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 4 p.m. PST. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say about that. In my opinion, flashlights are the most skill-based item in the game. There are three different flashlights. There's the uncommon flashlight and you get eight seconds of use out of it. There's this sport flashlight, which has eight seconds of use. It slightly decreases the flashlight battery consumption and it slightly increases accuracy. And then there's the utility flashlight, which has 12 seconds of use, slightly reduces accuracy, moderately increases the beam's visual brightness and moderately increases the blindness duration. Now with the flashlight, there are add-ons as well. A lot of these you don't Need. A lot of them are pretty trash if I'm quite honest. The ones you will want is the long life battery. It adds six seconds of use to a standard flashlight. Heavy duty battery, which will add four. The low amp filament, which will moderately decrease the flashlight battery consumption. And then the battery, which adds two seconds of use to a standard flashlight. You can use the intense halogen, which will considerably increase the beam's visual brightness and considerably increase the blindness duration. If you just want to blind a killer and really blind them for a while. You can also use the odd bulb, but do know that it does slightly increase the flashlight battery consumption. Broken bulb will cause the flashlight to flicker. It's just a cool effect to the flashlight. Nothing really special about it. Some perks that I like to use with the flashlights are one, built to last. Once per trial, a depleted item will refill 50% of its charges after 10 seconds. I like to use this one with the yellow flashlight, especially if I'm running low on batteries and I don't want to use anymore. I'll just put a yellow flashlight and then built to last with it. You also can use Streetwise. Streetwise reduces the consumption rate of an item charge by 25%. So it will give you a little bit more battery, but I do think there are better perks to run. I would also recommend Iron Will for flashlight saving. Iron Will um, reduces your grunts of pain by 100%. So you can stay close to the killer and your down teammate to try and make a save and they won't hear your grunts of pain if you're injured. I'd also recommend either using bond or empathy bond shows you your allies auras uh, up to 36 meters empathy will show you your injured allies auras uh within 128 meter range you'll have more knowledge to where they are if they're across the map and you don't have to try to guess with bond so these are just some perks that i recommend using with a flashlight you can just you don't have to use all four of these together i would recommend just using one or two perk slots and then putting any other perk on your other one. So you don't have to make your entire build around flashlights. These are just some perks that I recommend. Back to add-ons, if I'm using a purple flashlight, I tend to use the long life battery and the low amp filament. This will give you a long flashlight life and you don't need built to last with it unless you plan on blinding a killer multiple times at every single pal and window. This will last you the entire game and get you multiple saves. If I'm using the green battery, I tend to throw on a green battery and a yellow battery. When it says it slightly decreases the flashlight battery consumption, that means it has a built-in filament. So using two batteries will get you the most use out of your flashlight. I also use double batteries on my yellows because I do like to save my filaments for my purple flashlights, but then I'll also throw on built to last, like I said. There's also two other kinds of flashlights that I didn't talk about, one being the anniversary flashlight. It's literally just a reskinned yellow flashlight and it has eight seconds of use. When you get a flashlight save, it does explode with confetti which makes a cool effect, but that's pretty much it. And there's also the Will-O-Wisp flashlight, which is eight seconds of use. It's another reskinned yellow flashlight. And it also has a projection of a ghost when you shine it at a wall. So that's pretty much it with add-ons and perks. I just wanted to briefly touch that. Now I'm gonna show you how to aim your flashlight. To blind the killer, you aim the flashlight at their face like this. Oh, if I was to hold it, you will see some sway that is visual that will not affect your blind as long as you're aiming down the middle of your screen if we're just using nia as an example using her neck is the middle of the screen so if i point her neck at his face it'll blind him and once you get comfortable with flashlight saving it will be a lot easier to aim it you'll just you'll have it down like i can look at a killer like this and then instantly aim it it just becomes second nature at that point but that is how you aim it now let's talk about the actual animation of them picking up and you blinding them the killer pickup animation takes approximately three seconds. You need to start your flashlight blind two seconds into the pickup animation to stun the killer and save your teammate. Some people count, some people look at different aspects of the animation. What's most comfortable to me is when the killer pushes the survivor off their leg, it is gaining momentum up to their shoulder. 
This is the time that you're going to want to practice to perfect your flashlight saves. So I would go into a kill your friends, have them pick up a survivor and you find what is most comfortable for you to hit your flashlight saves. With pickup animations, they are pretty consistent among all the killers. Unless they're shorter killers, they have a slightly different pickup animation, but it's the same concept. Blight has a weird pickup animation and so does Demo. I'm gonna go ahead and show every killer's pickup animation. Feel free to skip ahead. We're gonna be talking about grab saves next. Your teammates can get grabbed off of gens, off of hook saves, coming out of lockers when they're slow vaulting a window. The animation is slightly different because they're not picking up from the floor, but still same concept. When the killer puts the survivor on their shoulders is where you're gonna wanna start the blind. This locker grab is different than a locker save. When the killer grabs a survivor that's hiding in a locker, the animation is different and we're gonna actually go over that now. Locker saves are weird because they seem to break them every single patch. The animation for a killer to pull a survivor out of the locker is longer than a normal pickup animation. But with the locker save, there's a sound cue to tell you when to save. Right after it makes the sound of the locker closing is when you want to start the beam. I think locker saves are one of the hardest saves to pull off because the timing has to be perfect. As of recording this, you can locker save against every single killer, but I have trouble against Demo and Blight. Ghostface has to be pixel perfect. But I did find that Pyramid Head is savable as well, but it has to be pixel perfect too. I'm going to go ahead and show all the killer locker save animations like I did with the regular saves. But if you want to skip ahead, go ahead and do so. The next topic that we're going to talk about is CJ's. Oh. 
CJs, in my opinion, are one of the most fun flashlight saves to pull off. The way they work is you're baiting the killer to pick up the survivor. The way that killers break pallets and pick up survivors is all bound to one key, spacebar usually. So when there's a down survivor under the killer's feet and they go to break a pallet, if you vault over that pallet, it now takes away their ability to break that pallet and they pick up the survivor. The save animation would be the same because they're just picking the survivor off the ground. So use the timing we talked about before. There's a couple ways you could do CJs. You can fake that you're leaving, then come vault the pallet. There's also something called a crack tech, which is where you blind the killer before you vault the pallet. This baits them into thinking that you're just going to blind them and leave, so they start smashing spacebar to break the pallet. It's good to note that you can only CJ Charlotte when Victor is released. This is because Victor has collision and prevents you from vaulting back over the pallet. Another CJ is what you could call a reverse CJ, and it's where you get hit and hide in the killer and then vault the pallet when they try to go and break it. Lastly, this is not a CJ tech, but I figured I would put it in this section just because it kind of relates to it, except it's with a locker. If there is a down survivor next to a locker and a killer is chasing you and you jump in it, and as soon as they come to pull you out of it, you jump out, you can bait them into picking up the survivor under their feet. Same pickup animation, same timing as before. This next section is going to be very quick. I just want to show that there are things that you can blind through to still save your teammates. If there's little cracks in walls or railings and stuff, you actually can save that. This section is going to be very short as well. I'm going to go over situational saving. In a perfect world, the killer would pick up right in front of you and give you the perfect opportunity to flashlight save them. But in most cases, you're going to actually have to hide, run, and set up for the saves. Different killers do different things. Some killers just pick up. Some killers act like they're picking up one way and face another. Some you're going to have to run and really set yourself up, even if it's at a wide angle. Just wanted to touch on that very quickly. This section is going to go over minor details of flashlights other than just saving. Things that might mess up your flashlight save is fire up. After every generator completed, the killer's pickup animation is faster, so it can throw off your timing. Also, if you're playing against a doctor and he gets you into tier 3 madness, you won't be able to use any of your items, so you'll have to snap out of it before you can use your flashlight again. Also with Doc, if you have dead hard, you can actually dead hard his static blast. This will keep your character from screaming so you remain hidden and you can get that flashlight save. If Wraith is uncloaking, if you shine your flashlight directly at his body and hold it there, it will burn him. You can do the same thing with Nurse while she's holding a blink, but this is less common. You can burn Hank's traps. But she might not be very happy about it. Victor is categorized as Charlotte's power, but you can blind him too. This last one requires a little bit of communication. Say the killer has their back to you and you and a teammate have a flashlight. Once they turn around, if you both shine your flashlight at the killer's face at the same time, it might catch them off guard and you might be able to get a save. This is going to be the section to end off the flashlight guide. This topic's not big enough to have a video of its own, so I thought I'd put it at the end of this guide because it does have to do with saving your teammates. So we're going to briefly talk about pallet saving and firecracker saving. Pallet saving is very simple. You're throwing the pallet as soon as their pickup animation stops. So once they throw the survivor on their shoulders and they settle down, throw the pallet. The thing with firecrackers is if you throw them down at the same timing as a flashlight save, they're gonna miss. So instead of waiting for the killer to get momentum to put the survivor on their shoulder, you're going to throw the firecracker down as he's lowering the survivor to his knee. All right, well, that's the end of the guide. I hope you liked this guide on flashlights. If you did like it, consider liking and subscribing. We post a lot of survivor content here. If you have any suggestions for tutorials, leave it in the comments below. And yeah, that's about it for me. Thank you again for watching all the way through and I'll see y'all in the next.
Bye.